Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is the Corsair SF1000L. This is a high performance 1000 watt ATX 3.0 small form factor power supply unit, which in this video I'm going to unbox and show off and talk about how to set it up, the various wires that are included in the box and what you get with it, how you can use it in your PC and where the cables plug in just to make your life a little bit easier. Now this is a 1000 watt power supply unit, I've done a guide separately on how to choose the right wattage and other considerations for your power supply unit that I'll link to in the description. But essentially this is designed for ITX small build cases so it'll fit nicely in there. Included in their case is one of these brackets designed to help you mount it in other cases so it's worth bearing that in mind and a mass of cables. There are a lot of cables included in here and I'm going to show you what's what and where they plug in. I'll also leave information in the description, all the things that are included in case you need to know and see it in writing. Now this is a small form factor PSU which I used in the Corsair 2000D along with this tiny little gigabyte motherboard which actually only requires two main power cables from it but you'll see that there are two 8-pin CPU power cables included in the box. More on that in a second. The first cable that we need to plug in is the 24-pin power supply cable, which will give the power to the motherboard. This plugs in where it's marked motherboard. It's split in two parts on one end and then has a large part on the other end. Now, for your reference throughout this video, I'm going to be plugging in the cables outside the case at the early stages so you can see what it looks like. Don't actually follow along right now. What you need to do is install your motherboard into your case and then install these cables into the right places. But I want to demonstrate it so you can see it really easily. So we're going to plug it in on the right hand side, this 24 pin. You'll notice there's a clip on one side and that notches into the bracket on the motherboard so that it will click in place. So push it down until it clicks and then it won't come out. And you can only put it in one way so you can't get it the wrong way around. The second is the 8 pin power CPU connector. Now this is a type 5 cable as are all the other cables included with this PSU which means they're smaller on the PSU end than they are on the motherboard or graphics card end. So just note that because you can't plug them in the wrong way around because it's got a much smaller connector on the power supply unit end. Obviously we're looking for the connector mark CPU on the power supply end and then on most motherboards you'll find the 8 pin power connectors are on the top left. There's only one on this motherboard, but if you do have two, not to worry because there's another cable included in the case as well, so you can plug two in. Next we're on to the GPUs. This is a Gigabyte 4070 Ti, and you'll be pleased to see that that classic 600 watt NVIDIA adapter, so the 12 VHPWR cable is included. So this has two connectors on one end that plug into the power supply, and then a single connector that plugs into your graphics card. This is for the 40 series and beyond, and it will surely make life a lot easier because you don't need to use any included adapters with your graphics card. Those usual hideous things that just spout out of the GPU and then you have to plug the traditional cables into. So two connectors on here. Look for the PCIe markings on the power supply. Plug those in. Make sure they're secured properly and then the other end plugs into your GPU. Once again, you need to make sure this is plugged in properly and fully seated. You can only plug it in one way because there's a little set of small pins on the top of it, for example, and you'll see that as you plug it in. And you need to make sure that's well secured in there. More on that in a little while. Now, if you don't have one of those and you have an older GPU or an AMD or an Intel GPU, not to worry because there's plenty of your traditional PCIe power cables included in the box as well. You can see we've got four here. And three of them are the single connectors as well. So if you have a power hungry GPU, not to worry. So what I mean by that is you have the single connector on one end and then you've got an eight pin split into six and two connectors on the other end, a single flat cable, easy to connect up. And that obviously gives you a good connection there. And there's several of these included in the box. So if you have a GPU which requires multiple 8 pin power connectors then you can easily connect up multiple cables so there's three of those are standard and then you have this additional one which is more of a pigtail so that's got two connectors on one end instead of one now for the demonstration purposes i'm using a gigabyte 3090 oc here and this has just two connectors on it but as i've shown you can use three so once again you're connecting up to the pcie slash cpu connectors on the power supply 
and then we're using the 8 pin power connectors on the graphics card and I'd recommend using two cables if you have two connectors on the GPU push those little notches together and again look out for the little clip to hold it in place because you'll see there's a notch on the graphics card so you need to make sure you line those up and make sure that these clips are pushed in properly uh, because if you find that you've only managed to push the six connectors in and not that two one that's kind of loose and you have to hold it together as you're pushing it in you might not get the right amount of power and your GPU might not function properly so if you do notice there's any issues it could be that that connection is loose so that's something to watch out for so plenty of cables there and now we have the SATA connection so this is the flat power connector so you can see here with a daisy chain set up these are used for a variety of things including fan controllers and things like that like the corsair commander core xt for example so that has a flat sata power connector that comes out of it so it needs power to empower and send rgb data to your fans but this is a daisy chain cable so it can connect up multiple other things it connects to the sata slash pata section on the power supply end and then you can connect up multiple other things to it. So these SATA connections are used for all sorts of things. Fan power controllers, RGB controllers, USB hubs, SSDs, and hard disk drives as well. So all sorts of different things can be connected up there. And because it's daisy chainable, you can connect up multiple devices to one single cable. So this makes life easier. It means that you can, especially with SSDs and hard disk drives, where they'll be in the same bay usually, you can easily plug these in and connect them up. The next one is this pattern connector, which is traditionally used for less things. So you probably find that you don't need this necessarily. So it's good to have a modular power supply unit where you don't have to plug everything in. But again, this goes into the pattern section on the power supply. And it's used for things like pump reservoir combos for custom loop systems, for example. So you can see one here from Corsair that I've used in the past, which requires power in that way. And there may well be other devices, but they're pretty rare. And you'll see that this one has the power connector on the bottom of the reservoir combo. So you can just basically plug that in there and get that set up if you're planning on doing that. Now, you may also find that the PCIe power cables that I showed you earlier on are used for other things. Sometimes you might find there's a motherboard connection for them. Other times they might be used for something else. So Corsair's IQ Link system, for example, uses uh, six pins from that eight pin power supply cable. It's worth noting as well that some graphics cards might have an eight pin power cable connection and then a six pin where you don't necessarily need to plug in two eight pins. So there are some variations in what I've shown you that are worth bearing in mind. But that's why that's detachable because it's used elsewhere in a variety of ways. Now I'd recommend plugging in all the cables you're going to need into the power supply unit before you continue the next step. So keep in mind what you're going to be using and then plug those cables in. That'll make life easier because then you've got to try and feed them into the case. And if you've got a small form factor case, it makes life a lot simpler if all those cables are already connected to the power supply unit and you don't have to go about fiddling around trying to work out where the slot is that you need and what cable needs to go in where and you can see that I had to do that here and it wasn't ideal but it's even less ideal when it's already mounted in the case so this is the Corsair 2000D RGB airflow and this small form factor PSU is ideal for this especially because it's going to be a pretty high-end build with that 4070 Ti in it and you can see that we just need to secure the GPU to the bracketing in the case. You'll notice that I'm not using that back plate that I showed you earlier on because that will be for larger cases where you want the small power supply unit to fit in a larger case. So once that's in, now we go about the process of plugging in the cables that I showed you earlier on. Make sure you plug in that 24 pin power supply cable for the motherboard and secure it properly. If that's not secured properly, it won't turn on. Then we've got the other connectors, the CPU, 8 pin power connector, the six pin connector for IQ link if you're using it and any other sort of fans and SSDs that you're using in there, don't forget to plug those in. And then we just go through the process of sorting out the rest of it. So with the graphics card, something to bear in mind is the amount of space that you've got in the case. So most of these cables with this power supply are, are smaller because it's designed for an ITX case. But what I found with the special adapter for Nvidia is that this cable is a bit long so you have to take great care not to bend it, stretch it, or give it too much of a pull. If there's too much tension on this cable, either at the power supply end or at the graphics card end, that could lead to problems. 
So make sure you're careful with that cable. Otherwise, that's everything finished. And hopefully you found this video useful. If you want to find out more about that build, check out the links in the description. And if you found this helpful, please consider subscribing or at least give me a thumbs up and drop me a comment down below. Thanks very much for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.